Hi, my name is Elizabeth and I work with Colorado Parks and Wildlife in the Schools and Outdoor Learning Environments program. And I'd like to ask you a question today. Do you know the difference between an antler and a horn? Let's talk about it. Horns, like this pronghorn you see here, is made up of something called keratin. That's a protein that makes up your fingernails, your hair, and if you remember from our snake sheds video, snake skins. Now the big difference between a horn and an antler is that protein is on the outside of the horn and on the inside, you'll see a bone. So the sheath of the prong horn goes on the outside. Antlers, not to be confused with horns, are a little bit different. Let's take a look at an elk shed for a second. So when you look at this, this antler is made entirely of bone. And in fact, there's no hollow inside here. You can see that this is all one piece. This is actually one of the fastest growing tissues of all mammals. And these sheds will actually come off the animal during the winter to springtime. So they can be found all around Colorado. And other animals in the deer family also shed, including mule deer. So you can see sheds like this showing up around Colorado during the winter and springtime. Antlers grow from something called pedicle, a tiny bone on the skull. Antlers are only seen in males of the deer species like that of moose, elk, mule deer, and white-tailed deer. The only exception being the caribou, where you can actually see antlers on both males and females. But you won't be finding caribou around Colorado anytime soon. As the antlers grow each year, they are covered in a membrane called velvet. This provides nourishment to the growing bones and has hairs that helps the deer to feel around if it's too close to something that could cause damage to its head or the growing antlers. So many people, when they look at an antler, think that they are able to age the animal, but that's not necessarily the case. In fact, you're probably more likely to be able to tell the health of the animal when you look at an antler, be able to tell the amount of nutrients they're able to get a hold of. Maybe their environment has a little bit more nutrition and they're able to get a little bit more of it than others. So which one do you think got a little bit more nutrition? This one? Or this one? The bigger the rack, the more healthy a deer is. Although size can give you an estimate of the age range of a deer's life. Let's take a bull elk, for example. A typical six by six bull, that's a bull with six points on his antlers on each side, is most likely around four and a half years old. Some of these elk can actually be carrying around 40 pounds on their heads. Some moose, it's even 80 pounds. But why waste all that energy growing such large antlers that will just fall off in the spring? Well, it all has to do with winning the right to mate. Rutting season, or mating season, occurs during different times in the fall for each of these deer species. And it puts a lot of stress on the males. Here, they battle for dominance and the right to mate with the females of their species. With the elk, for instance, it's all about gathering a group of cow elk called a harem. A dominant bull elk can maybe have even 50 to 100 cows in a harem, and it may come down just to a handful of winners. And a lot is writing on their abilities since it's all about passing on their genes to the next generation. You may be wondering to yourself after looking at all these different really cool sheds, man, how do I get my hands on one of these? Well, slow down there. There's a couple things you need to know before you go. There is a time of year closure for shed collection. In Colorado, on all public lands west of I-25, it is prohibited to collect antlers from January 1st through April 30th. In some areas, there is also a time of day closure from sunset to 10 a.m. You may be wondering, well, why is there a prohibition to begin with? The deer don't need their antlers by winter anymore anyways. Well, winter can be a very difficult time of year. Those looking for sheds can cause distress when venturing out into the deer's habitat. So to help them better survive, we can give them more space during this time. And leaving behind those sheds not only helps the deer survive, but it also helps other wildlife as well. In fact, many will actually go and seek out those sheds throughout the winter in order to get extra calcium into their diet. Here's an example here. On this elk antler, it looks like a squirrel chewed off a piece of it in order to get that calcium. Sometimes it's the small things that we do that help wildlife the most.
Is there another topic that you'd like to see Soul cover? Go ahead and share it in the comments below.